All right, so we're gonna paint this puppy and I'm going to use my 3M Paint Spray Respirator Professional Series. This is a model R7512ES. Um, I've got a couple of the other type of respirators, the ones with the round cartridges on them and you change the cartridge for depending on what, uh, what the application is. And this is, uh, this one says it's recommended for paint spray, insecticides, oh, uh, pesticides, organic vapors or solvents, uh, ultra comfortable, durable, long lasting face piece, replaceable parts and cartridges. So anyways, I'm gonna give this one a try. Um, I don't have anything against the other type. Like I said, I still have them around here, but A, I can't find the one I've been using right along, and B, I can never remember what cartridges I have in it, and depending on what the application is, you should have a, a cartridge that's rated for it, you know, whether or not you're, depending on what you're doing or whatever, so. We'll try this one. You know, you always want to wear a respirator when you're painting. Try and have ventilation. I'm gonna open the bulkhead door here, even though it's pretty cold outside. And uh, if you're gonna be building up fumes in a closed space like this, you don't want any open flames. I don't want a wood stove going down here or anything like that. Uh, I'm gonna temporarily shut off the ignition switch on the boiler. Um, might seem like being overly precautious, but uh, last week, or was it earlier this week, a three-decker in Rhode Island blew up. I mean, it blew up so bad that it was just falling down. They had to demolish it. Luckily, no one was killed, and it's still under investigation. They're going to go with, most likely, because there was a problem with the heating system prior to the explosion. They believe that it was a buildup of uh, gas inside the house that led to uh, probably being ignited by, could have been anything. Somebody hit a light switch, makes a tiny spark, that'll do it. Um, any electrical motor starting that might uh, arc inside, uh, make a tiny little arc, could uh, could do it. And I mean, you're talking about, it doesn't take much to touch off a gas cloud. Well, paint fumes are also flammable. So, anyways, most paint fumes, unless you're like painting latex, I guess. Uh, so, pardon the shaking, but I got the rattle can going here. I want to make sure I got that good rattled up. Yeah, so uh, you don't want to uh, breathe in fumes because it'll cause memory loss. Yeah, so you don't want to breathe in fumes because it'll cause memory loss. <laughs> All right. I guess teenage kids buy this paint now and they, uh, they spray it into containers and they whiff the fumes. They, they suck the fumes and inhale them to get high. Imagine that. I didn't realize that. I don't know. I don't recall any of the kids doing it when I was young, but I was in the hardware store one day and a kid came in, probably about 15 year old kid came in, wanted to buy a can of paint. And the salesperson at the hardware store starts asking him all these questions. What's he want to paint for? The kid said he wants to paint his bicycle. And after the kid left, I said, what was that all about? He explained to me that's what they're doing with the paint these days. You can't believe it. Not all kids, but you know what I mean. Enough of them that the guy at the hardware store is worried about what the kid's going to do with the paint. So, anyways, yeah, you know, that kid fries his brain, and then the parents are going to be like, well, where do you get the paint? And they're going to be all like, well, who sold it to him, right? We live in a litigious society. Is that it? Litigious? Is that the word? I don't know. Anywho, you don't want to get dizzy, okay? So, always have the respirator on. Okay, regarding the respirator, some assembly required. Looks pretty straightforward though. This looks like what I'm used to seeing with the little lock on things here. So we've got the uh, organic vapor cartridges are in here. Let's get those out. I like that they uh, kind of idiot proof these cartridges. If you'll notice, well, I don't know if you can see it or not. You can't really tell on here, but on here there's the three locking studs. One of them's smaller than the other two. So these will only go on one way. So you just basically lightly rotate them around until it slips on and then give it a twist and they lock on like that one. And now that I've got the organic vapor cartridges in place, I can now install the uh, pre-filters. I'm assuming that's what they're gonna call these. 
hey, maybe I should consult the instructions just for the heck. Okay, this is the paperwork that came with the uh, <laughs> with the respirator. This sheet, this sheet, this sheet, this giant sheet. And actually, if you wanted to, you could probably read what's on here too. Uh, so, anyways. What we're going to do is, let's see what we can narrow down here. This sheet here says Compagnon 3M Canada. All right, so let's say that that's, uh, oh, wait a minute, 3M Minnesota. All right, so the other side's in French. This side is in English. And this is going to be, uh, I, I guess, if you're in an industrial environment where you've got to meet certain safety specifications for OSHA and stuff like that, um, or some kind of certification maybe you would know what the heck all of this means but it goes on to say uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here that's unintelligible to me I consider myself a fairly smart guy but I don't know what all this means see if you can see that okay see all those letters and you're up here you know it tells you you know if you get the alternate face piece on you're, you got X's here Alternate adapters, retainer, alternate cartridge, filters, blah, blah, blah. All right, so I'm not going to use that in my lifetime. This one looks like the chart that I just showed you. Uh, yeah. It's all Greek to me. Trash that one, too. Then we got this big one here. This looks like the assembly instructions. And then we got this little one. Particulate respirator, organic vapor, P95. Do it yourself slash homeowner applications. Ah, okay. Uh, government approved. Okay. Do not use for any toxic or harmful substances such as lead, asbestos, ammonia, bleach odors, methylene chloride, and carbon monoxide. Okay, got it. I'm, I promise I won't use it for that. Fitting instructions. Uh, let's get to that. Let's let's go with uh, assembly here. Okay. Again, one of these giant sheets of paper that will never, ever, ever want to fold back into the size that it was when I got it. But luckily, I'm going to put this respirator together, and then uh, I'm not planning on taking it apart again unless I end up changing the cartridges. So let's see. We got the... Uh, all right, there's where I am right now. I got those on. Figure two, figure three. That's where I put those other things on. Now let's see what we can read about that. Okay, it looks like they're explaining how to do several different types of, they must use the same instructions for several different uh, units. Uh, Cause this uh, series 6,000 cartridge assembly series, then it goes uh, series 2,000. Basically, it looks like uh, what we do is what I already did, which is stick them on until they line up. Apparently, there's an arrow on there to help them line up. I didn't even notice that. Twist it, snaps in easy enough. Um, and then these other filters just snap on, and it does say, uh, see the retainer. So the printed side of filter faces the cartridge. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have time to sit there and decipher all of that. Uh, I just stuck them on there like this. I can almost guarantee you that that's right. There's writing on both sides of this, so this must be a different filter that they're talking about. I don't know. All right, so I'll put it on and adjust it. Well, I like the way the strap system works on this new respirator. It's uh, pretty nice. It's a lot more comfortable. Um, I'm going to show you my ugly mug. But you see how happy this guy is right here? That's because it's comfortable. See? It's got this... Uh, it's got this like uh, two-part strap that goes over your head like a beanie on the back there. Okay, that is what does most of the support, and then you just get a neck strap that goes around the back. I don't know if that's gonna—I don't know if that would bother me after a long period of time or not. If that would be bothersome, it doesn't seem to bother me right now. And of course, you do the, the, the typical test with these is once you get it all adjusted and it feels comfortable, you cover the uh, cover the inlets there and, and breathe in, and it should suck in. You shouldn't get a whole bunch of leakage around the uh, mask itself. Pretty good. I don't know how this would fit if you had a 
I'm not sure how well this would fit if you had a heavy beard, a bushy beard, but I'm assuming that probably nobody gets a good fit with a bushy beard. Bush! <laughs> okay, there's our first coat. Not too bad. Didn't want to get too heavy on the edges here because I would, it would get drips and runs. Uh, I like it. You know, look in the uh, reflection, you can see, uh, see some inconsistencies in that. But again, we're not going for... Uh, fumes are strong in here and this respirator is doing an excellent job uh, so I'm going to keep it on while I'm talking much to the dismay of you guys but anyways I'll let this dry and then I'm going to come down and uh, hit it with a second coat okay it's been about an hour and I just applied the second coat that's looking pretty good now I'm going to let it cure overnight <laughs> 